This episode of Tea with Jewels is proudly brought to you by The Home. You can shop any of the items you see in this episode at thehome.com.au. Jules, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. You requested fancy florally pink <laughs> I cups did. and a teapot. Request granted, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I didn't want to have to storm off set. <laughs> thank you very much. Before we get started, are you a tea drinker? Yeah, I love green tea actually. Yeah. find it nice and relaxing at the end of a long day, so mm-hmm. yeah, I do. Now we know and love you from The Bachelor 2015. Yes. Where you had you know like 25 girls throwing themselves at you for <laughs> yep. love and affection yep. <laughs> which is awesome for you I'm sure wow, crazy life experience <laughs> I think we can say and I'm a massive bachelor fan so I watched the whole journey and, <laughs> okay. yep, yeah I loved it but there's so much more to you and I love this you're actually a really avid businessman <laughs> and you've got you've got a whole bunch of, of businesses on the go you were very successful when you went into the bachelor and even more successful now so let's yeah, talk well, I don't about know that. very successful but yeah I have had moderate success in business and do love the business side of things as mm-hmm. much as I love the fitness side of things and being able to combine the two I don't know I think I think it comes from my dad he's always had his own businesses in hospitality and restaurants and I don't think the apple falls too far from the tree there mm-hmm. I don't really like being stuck in an office and I can't really envisage myself working for someone else it's not really I like freedom and I like flexibility and I like being able to express myself creatively and I think having your own business allows you to do all those things. Mm, good on you. So take me back, you grew up in Melbourne? Is that no, right? no, oh. I'm a Tassie boy. Oh, tell me, tell me yes. everything. Yes, so I lived in Tassie for the first 20 years of my life. Mm-hmm. Moved to Melbourne to start uni because uh, they don't offer the human movement degree that I did uh, in Hobart, so mm-hmm. it was either Launceston or, as we call it in Tassie, the mainland. Yes. <laughs> a big jump across to the mainland mm-hmm. and got a part-time job as a personal trainer while I was doing my degree and that was where it all kicked off. It was just, I don't know, I was a bit lost until that point. I remember I uh, actually got accepted into a psychology law degree when I first finished school and remember reading that going, do I really want to do this? I don't know. If what this is. I've probably Mm. seen too many John Grisham films or something and think this is going to be far cooler than it really is. I don't know. It was a a bit of a weird path and I so I went overseas and coached basketball in America for a year and sort of started working with kids and loved working with kids and loved the whole sport and fitness side of things and then I went into a human movement degree and then the fitness industry and I'm still in the fitness industry and I love it. Your first business that you opened was working with kids. I, I worked as a subcontractor so it's sort of like having your own business. You have to you know, do all your own tax and marketing and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So I did that as a PT and before I knew it I was training a lot of kids and built brilliant relationships with them and their families and I just thought there needs to be a place where kids can still be kids and train and they're not sort of forced to train in an adult environment you know where it's not you know, there's still adult equipment. They're still sort of seen as in the way and it's not really what, you know, a place that's designed for them. So in 2008, I opened Australia's first ever kids gym, which was called Gecko, and it's still called Gecko to this day. Mm-hmm. It's evolved lots over the last sort of eight years. It's now, it's now run more in the schools in a mobile capacity. So we have little vans go around all over Australia and deliver after school programs and birthday parties and in school incursions and uh, yeah it's a great business and I love it. I can't wrap my head around kids training. Yeah. Oh, what, look, is, it's, what does it involve? It's all about getting kids active, relevant to different movements that they need for specific sports but developing a love for sport. You know mm-hmm. as a child, you know, as an adult movement should be fun but we really get that as a kid through sport you know whether it be building friendships learning you know all of our developmental yeah. skills teamwork how do you feel about the the health and the physical activity of kids yeah in, look in it's, this day and age? it's it's a worry i mean mm-hmm. we tend to focus more on adults um but that's where it comes from you know obese children become obese adults there's no uh coincidence with that and mm-hmm. if we can do something about it at the source, then we're really going to be helping the problem. Do you feel like you're making a real difference and yeah, an impact on their life? Yeah, Yeah, you do. I mean, you've got, they, they tend to have developed less bad habits. Mm-hmm. They tend to be more open-minded. Um, they need 
and sort of crave a good strong role model and some guidance and I think if you can provide that early on and you can instill all those really healthy habits in them at an early age they more often than not have them forever mm. and that's that's a really powerful thing you know it's it's amazing you know gecko now being eight years old and me doing personal training with children probably three or four years before that there's kids I bump into now who are no longer kids mm. and you know they still sort of say oh you know before I met you I didn't really like sport and now I'm still playing sport regularly and it really did change my outlook and yeah. you know, they're almost old enough now to have a bit of appreciation about it when they mm. reflect back and it's a really powerful thing. What would you do with a kid who who doesn't like sport, who just doesn't want to give it a go, yep. kind of embarrassed to play a team sport, yep. not good at team sports or yeah, not, I think, doesn't feel coordinated? What would you do with it? Look, I don't think you've got to think outside the box a little bit. I often say to parents, they te- parents tend to try mainstream sports and mainstream team sports and they'll try two or three across two or three school terms, you know, soccer, footy, mm-hmm. basketball, mm-hmm. and none of them work, often for the same reasons. They feel ostracised, it's too much pressure, mm-hmm. kids are quite cruel to other mm-hmm. kids, they don't pass them the ball, etc. So you've got to think outside the box, you know, those kids might be better off doing an individual sport like tennis or golf. They might be better off doing a sport that doesn't involve so much hand-eye coordination like swimming or running or something like that. So you really do need to exhaust every avenue Mm. and more cases than not, that child will find something they like. It's typically something a bit outside the square. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, on behalf of all the mothers, (laughs) thank you. Thank you. So pre-bachelor, that's what you were doing? So I've also got a PT studio Mm -hmm. called The Woodshed Mm -hmm. down in Brighton, Melbourne. So... I was, sort of, I was sort of running those two simultaneously. Then The Bachelor came along and flipped my world upside hey, down. Hey, tell me everything. How did this all come about? So I'd sit in the gym. I'd be working away on different gecko and woodshed stuff and there'd be a number of regular clients that had come through and there was one in particular who would say, and she was literally saying this for two years, mm-hmm. Sam, you need to go on that show. Why are you still single? And, you know, she's a lovely lady, and, but she was quite persistent. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't know, Kelly, I... I don't know if it's really my thing, you know, like meeting someone on national television. It, I was a bit sort of sceptical about it. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Had you watched it before? I'd never seen the show oh, before, yeah. so it's only sort of what I'd heard or seen on ads. Yeah, she said, no, no, I'm serious. You're going to apply. Anyway, she was doing a personal training session with one of my trainers and she came around behind reception and she opened it up, opened up the bachelor application page and she said, by the time I get down, you're going to have applied. Anyway, I thought, well, here we go. So I started applying, not realising it was quite such an in-depth, in-depth process. Right. By the time she came down after an hour, I was only about halfway through the application because it's about 200 questions. Is there? It was a what real, did I ask you? Oh, it was a real sort of insight into your psychology. You wow. know, they really obviously want, they want someone who's on the show for the right reasons. They want mm. someone who's on the show, I think, I, I mean, I, did, I didn't really know what they were looking for. I, you know, I did answer the questions just sort of openly being myself, but I didn't realise it would be quite quite the process it was and the phone rang the next day saying oh we just received your application Sam it was only about a week before application shut yeah um we'd love to do a Skype interview with you when can we do that anyway a week later we did a Skype interview and then the next day they called again uh we'd like to fly you to Sydney to do a panel interview with three women and three men from Shine and Channel 10 um you've made it through to we can't tell you how many, but you know, you're down to the sort of last stage. Mm-hmm. Would you be interested in coming to Sydney for that process? And it wasn't until then that I thought, huh, this actually might happen. Like, I didn't yeah. think I'd get it. Yeah. I thought, oh, well, it'll be an interesting, you know, experience to apply, but I had no, no thought that I'd actually get it. Anyway, yeah, they rang me about a week later and said, you've been successful, but you're going to have to pack up your life, or as in get someone in to run your business, not stop it, but. Um, you won't be able to contact people. You'll be sort of trapped from the outside world for 13 weeks living in Sydney and that all has to happen in 12 days. What do you think? And so I was there and you've got, and I had 12 hours to make the decision. I just remember thinking, I've come this far. If I don't do it, it'll be something I always look back and regret. It's easy to look back at these things, Jules, retrospectively and go, well, now I've met this incredible woman that I'm engaged yeah. to and the best thing I've ever done, mm-hmm. bar none, how ridiculous would it have been to not do it? I, I don't know. It's very easy to think that now. At the time, I don't know. I, I really just thought, if I don't do this, I'll regret it. From watching it, I, I think you came across so well. Like, Thank like 
now that I've met you in person, you yeah. really are that person that was on the TV. <laughs> That's what everyone says to me. Like, yeah. oh, you're just like you were on the TV. Yeah. Or like my mates, you know, the nicest thing my mates said to me while watching it, besides obviously giving me a fair ribbing, which I probably deserved with all the romantic <laughs> stuff that was coming out of my mouth, yes. talking about the journey jewels and all mm, that kind of stuff. Feelings but, and stuff. Yes. Yeah. My mates had a whiteboard and they used to watch every episode as a group and mm. write tragic oh. quotes up on the whiteboard and uh that's yes so and then circulate them through our little group of friends saying oh mate you've really outdone yourself <laughs> this time the nicest thing they said was mate you really are being yourself and yeah. that must have been a hard thing to do in such a fishbowl environment you know that was the advice my dad gave me he said oh, i always suppose if you're yourself you'll be fine mm -hmm. you know, he was quite sort of flippant about the yeah. whole thing and i think because i was that person it means that what snezh and i have is real because mm -hmm. we were both ourselves and we were really getting to know each other and it wasn't getting to know someone who was playing a character i guess because yeah. it is reality tv I feel. yeah it is and it is like even though you know it is a show and it's it's manufactured to a certain degree because it has to be it's television and then you know it's not yeah. a natural environment and the country is watching you do all of this and that is so nerve-wracking you kind of ruin your mate and be like what do you think about no this advice. girl yeah. yeah i mean you learn you learn so much about yourself mm. because it's the first time and maybe the only time that you ever do that you know there's always outlets you can ask people do you hear what you want to hear or you can you know it's very rare that you dig so deep internally mm -hmm. and get to know yourself so well you know i mean by no means am I a perfect person and do I not have issues like everyone that I need to resolve and deal with and like most people I kind of suppress those things but this is an experience in which it brings all that stuff to the surface you learn so much about yourself it's easily the hardest thing I've ever done in my life like it was filming for five or six days a week 12 to 16 hours a day for 13 weeks yeah. you know on very little sleep your routine, your freedom, your flexibility, everything that I love about my job mm -hmm. was completely taken away from me. And you then add on top of that this really challenging job of being as respectful and as caring to mm -hmm. these women as you can who have also put themselves in a very vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. And it got harder as it went along because I started to develop feelings for Sajana, but I still had to be as respectful as I could to all the other girls and know that the show was going to film for the length it was going to film for and still make the most of every date with every other girl even though I could sort of feel myself falling for Snezh at the same time and that that got really tricky especially towards the end there was an amazing moment at the end of just relief yes. and finally we could be together without cameras on us because we, we you don't get any time with the girls off camera you kind of so have these great camera. dates and then they go all right Snezh off you go Sam off you go done and you feel like you're just sort of getting somewhere yeah. and you know, you're sort of pulled apart. We both sort of look back and laugh and go, how crazy that we met each other under these circumstances. We were both a bit skeptical. I mean, Snezh left her little girl Eve mm. for the, they hadn't been apart for one day before the filming of the show. Mm -hmm. And they had 13 weeks apart, apart from the home visits where they were reunited. Mm -hmm. And that was so cute. It was so cute. I cried. Yeah. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, knowing them both so closely now and yeah. the unbelievable bond they have, I can't believe they survived that. Right. I mean, Snedge says, I thought I was going to be away for a week. Right. And then whoever the bachelor was would probably find out that I'm a single mum and I'd be back home. Mm. Yeah, we just laughed that there's no way we would have met under any other circumstances. No, exactly. She is so hot. Yes, she is. Yes, yeah, she is. I yeah. agree with you there, Jules. I can see why yeah, you she, felt for her. No, she's beautiful. She's the nice girl as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. She's and she's like super smart. She's just finished a uh, science degree in biotechnology and genetics, and she's been she's been great for me in every way. You know, she really looks after me and cares for me and you know, gets the balance really, really right with, you know, obviously being a great mum with Eve and mm -hmm. Eve and I are building a really good relationship and every time we see each other we get a little bit closer and, you yeah. know, that's just one of those things that I think having worked with kids a lot in my life, it's really helped because there's, there's no, I just don't feel any pressure, you know, it's one of those things where our friendship will develop at the rate that Eve lets it develop at mm -hmm. and I'm totally comfortable with it. Yeah. Because yeah. that is a massive thing, taking on um, a child yeah. as well, and, and for Schnez as well. Yeah, exactly. saying it right. 
Not bad. Schnez. Not bad. Schnez. No, snez. That's quite good. Quite I good. I can't snez. Snez. Well, yeah, the Z is a Z. So, snezhana. And don't worry, wrong, Jules. It took me snezhana. eight of the 13 weeks to even get close. I remember snezhana. the producers were like, mate, we know you've got some pretty strong feelings for this girl. You're going to have to get a name right. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Snezhana. That was not right. Not bad. Not bad. It's more of a Z than a Z. Snez. Snezhana. Snezhana. I'm just going to call her S. S, okay. S. I, we'll go okay. with S. S. S is fine. Taking on a child is massive. And as a mother, having someone, you know, Oh, look, it's equally as big life. for her. Yeah. And I, I mean, both of us, just, well, I mean, what a crazy life-changing experience for both of us. And you can, I think you do go onto those shows because you do want your life to change. I'd been single for about five years before going on the show and something did need to change and I understand it's a very unorthodox extreme way to go about it, but it all panned out really well. So what is it about S, S that, we, yeah. that you just, what is it? She's got this amazing balance of strong, like mm -hmm. she's very passionate, tough Macedonian woman. Mm -hmm. But she's also got this beautiful soft side. She's just smart enough to know when, when it's right to be the hard person and mm -hmm. strong person, and when it's right to be the, you know, to be the softer person. And on the show, I saw both sides of that. You could see the stress of being on the show, getting to a lot of the girls. Mm -hmm. She didn't flinch. Mm -hmm. She was resolute through the whole process. She was powerful. She was strong. She was calm. And to be honest, she probably had the biggest reason to crumble being away from her daughter mm -hmm. so you know that didn't go unnoticed and then she's obviously this beautiful you know stunning mm -hmm. woman that uh, it's very very easy to be attracted to that's for I sure I could see that yes. on the show yes you just just wanted to touch her I did you just I wanted did. to put your hands on her I really did <laughs> I know I, was, I didn't hide it very well did I no I know no, I know do you remember the moment where you're like oh no she's this is it the first time I touched her it was just a hug for a photo shoot on the first group date yeah. and there was something there that I hadn't, I had, I'd hardly even spoken to her. We'd had one chat at a cocktail party on the couch and then she was one of the Bond girls in a photo shoot and I remember having, there was Madeline on one side and Snezh on the other side and it, it was like Madeline wasn't even there. So then she'd have grabbed me and pulled me in close and I was like, There's some, there was something there. And um, obviously it developed a lot from that point, but that was the first time I was like, there's really something about you that's special. Yeah. And everyone goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> obviously zero regrets and of course, like your life has changed a million times over. What is it about your life that, that wakes you up in the morning that you're so excited to live your day? Oh, look, I've always been a pretty positive person who loves life. I think. I think when you're in the fitness industry and your job is to educate and inspire other people, you do have to practice what you preach. I love people and I love, you know, I love getting people active. You know, I've got a new online program in which I have this incredible community of people that I speak to two to ten times a day. Mm -hmm. You know, an hour ago I was sending them a video from Bondi Beach mm -hmm. and now I'm here talking to you on the couch and, you know, I love sharing my life with them and Snezh does too and I've always loved being around people. I think it's me when I'm at my most comfortable and I've always loved health and fitness and now that I've got the ability to combine the two and obviously there's a bit more of a profile there and you can help more people, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty special, it's the best job in the world. So the new program is 28 minutes yep. a day for 28 days. Exactly, yeah. So we start a new program on the first Monday of every month. Everyone starts together, everyone finishes together. They do a workout with me for 28 minutes a day. Say with you, not physically with no, you, so online. It, yeah, or, as a video though. Yep. So it's not, they don't just get a program and they have to work their way through it. There's mm -hmm. five different levels, there's different workouts. Mm -hmm. They choose that program, they get weekly eating plans, shopping lists, recipes. And and then there's the real time motivation and support. It's mm -hmm. all about progressing forward. And um, you know, the program's now three and a half months old and there's thousands of people that have lost over 20 kilos and wow. totally changed their lives. In three got, months, yep, really? We've got people wow. from Australia, Europe, America, Asia, yeah. doing the program. I mean, the power of social media is just yeah. quite incredible. Congratulations, yeah, that's cool. amazing. Very, very cool. Yeah, I saw your Facebook, you've got, I 
think that's thirty-two thousand likes on your Facebook. Yeah, that, I know. That, so I had I had one hundred and fifty followers on Instagram before the patch one, <laughs> and I remember that Channel Ten said, "Oh, you should go to the Logies. No one will know who you are, but it'll be a good sort of experience for you." I said, yeah. oh, "Okay, I'll do as I'm told." And I was sitting next to Sam Frost, and she's like, "Oh, do you want me to?" do a post and tag you in it. I was so bad on social media, I had no idea what I was doing, and not that I'm that great now. And, uh, and she's like, is this you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's me. She's like, 152 followers. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now i got like 200,000 followers or something on Instagram, Amazing. and she's like, it, you know, it's just, it's a weird, mm -hmm. weird transformation. But I think if you're using your social media powers for good, yeah, I think that's amazing. Yeah. I think. And I meet them in the flesh when I can, so I met, I did a workout on Bondi Beach with 50 28ers at four o'clock yesterday afternoon. You know, wow. whenever I'm in different parts of Australia, I'll try and catch up with as many of them as I can. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't just want to have an online relationship with them. If I do get the opportunity to meet them in the flesh, I'll take that opportunity mm -hmm. with both hands, that's for sure. Yeah. And it is everything, and you do cover that off, so exercise and, yeah. and meal plans. And, and there's mindfulness components mm -hmm. with little meditations, yeah. and um, you know we've got a really good team of experts around us with dietitians and nutritionists and psychologists, and yeah. sometimes I sit on the couch with them. I'm in, yeah. the, I'm in your seat yeah. and ask them questions that our 28ers want to know so that yeah. they really do become educated as mm -hmm. they go along. And they're not just doing a sit and forget program. It really is changing their attitudes and their mindset so that they can hopefully live a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. forever. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. So great. So what's the future? What's the future for Snezh and I is just to, oh look, we both crave normality. I mean, we just want to end up living together, um, have more children, you know, look after Eve as best we can. She's this incredible little girl with a really bubbly personality she's so creative she's very smart and yeah I've always wanted to be a dad and it was just about meeting the right person and yes Nesh and I want to have more kids not tomorrow necessarily but we do and with a the family then what more could you ask for that's awesome yeah and you're going to be involved in Dry July is that right yeah that's yeah. right so 28 is teaming up with Dry July the fact that it's for a month my program mm -hmm. Is a 28 day program. Um, it's all about making healthy lifestyle changes. They, the two just tie in really, really well. And yeah. we're gonna team up with them and raise some great awareness and raise some money for charity. And we're really excited. Sam, good. thanks for coming. Thank you for having it's me. Very casual. I, am I too today. casual? No, I'm loving no, it. No, I do relax. Maybe it's I relax great. too much. But I think your tea's gone cold. Oh, I know, I know. Fancy butterfly cup. I, I, <laughs> you better swing this down. Yeah.